morning, afternoon or evening everybody. Um, it's Catherine here from Cat V Stitches and welcome back to my channel. So, or oh, if you are new here, hello and welcome. Um, this is a channel about cross stitch, a bit of knitting. I occasionally do diamond painting um, and some other crafts but at the moment I'm concentrating on cross stitch and this is Ruby come to say hello early on in the video hello okay so um oh i know for some people it is mother's day today so happy mother's day um, and i hope you are all safe and well so as the title of this floss tube suggests i have um done lots and lots and lots of stitching over the past couple of weeks I'd hoped I would be able to get a video out last week, but um, life intruded, and I'll go into more in that when I do the update at the end, um, when I do a live update at the end of this video. But basically over the last three weeks, I have stitched and knitted my little heart out. Um, I have found that it is a great way to relax, de-stress, so considering how stressful things have been recently, that has meant a lot of stitching. So I have a lot of things to show you. But also, I um, give you the headline now for anybody who's interested. For those who've watched my previous videos, I can quite proudly state that it has now been over two weeks since I have fallen over, tripped or had any other significant accident. So today I am injury free. So long may that continue. <laughs> Okay, so let's just get straight into the stitching that I've done. Um, although it is May, I've not actually followed any type of mania stitching or whatever it is that it's been called. Um, I have just, well, I have followed a plan in one respect. I've kind of looked at some of my larger pieces and decided that I'm going to give them some concentrated effort. So maybe do four to five working, four to five days on each one and then fit in some smaller projects in between. Um, at, sorry, can I just very quickly say, if my eyes seem to be looking in the wrong place at certain places, it's because I'm filming this now on my iPad. So, uh, because I've, I've found the wonder of iMovies and how easy it is to do all editing and things like that on there. But the problem is, is my eyes automatically want to look at what looks to me to be straight ahead, but to you, looking off. And it's really difficult to actually look where the camera is, so I've had to put a little sticky note saying, look here. But even with that there, I still may occasionally stray off to the side, so I do apologise if you start thinking, oh, what's going on? I'm getting used to it. <laughs> but as I was saying, the stitching. Um, so I've done quite a bit of stitching. I've worked on some of my larger pieces, but I have fitted in some of the smaller ones as well. Um, but what I'll start with is my finishes because there's one that I'm rather proud of and you may just be able to see it over my shoulder here but it's my Cricut Collection October. I am in love with this piece, absolutely in love with it and this is the reason why I have been collecting as many Cricut Collection patterns as I can because I just I just think they're brilliant and they stitch up so nicely um, but for this particular one what I will do is, is in a second I'll insert a, a close-up look at it so you can see what it looks like but just to say at this point that I swapped out some of the call for threads and put in a lot of the toile and I do mean a lot <laughs> so we've got the cat, the bat, some of the hats, the ghost, the moon, the skull, the fire the um, angel on the top there and the skull and hat at the end there that's all been swapped out with a toile and I know it doesn't show in the best here the toile and probably in the video in sh I'll insert it won't show brilliantly there either but the effect is brilliant so yeah love it love it love it so although it's not fully finished yet so I've not, um, I'm going to put it on another board behind there with some nice fabric 
maybe a purple fabric or I'll have to think about that but then it will look better but at the moment I've just got it up on the wall there and I'm, I'm just put it up on display because I just absolutely love it so I like coming in here sitting down to do stitching and just looking at that because I'm very proud of it um I don't know if I said that but I am <laughs> My other finish is actually a knitting finish. So as I think I've mentioned previously, I was knitting um, something for my mum. I was knitting a long sleeveless cardigan or a waistcoat or gilet, if you're going to be fancy. And I actually finished it, bar blocking it. And what a nightmare this was. Um, I have said in a previous video that this is an old pattern that I followed and so it was not the easiest. I literally had to knock on to my neighbour who used to do knitting to ask if she could help me to decipher the pattern because it was that difficult to follow. But I finished and I have managed to um, sew it all together. Oh, I can't really see it that well here. So what I think I'll do, no, I can't really show it. It's a bit too big. Um, there's the top half anyway. But let me tell you the nightmare that I had with this. So I had done the back panel first, then the front left panel, sewed it all up here. And it was all matching absolutely brilliantly. Stitching all matching. Then I did the right panel. And what I must have done is just before it starts to decrease here, I must have added in an extra row. Didn't realise what I'd done. Didn't realise the implications of it. Finished the whole thing. Went to put it against here just to double check. Realised that the armhole decrease was on the wrong side and this was basically a mirror image of this and I had to frog the whole thing back down to here and re-knit it <sighs> crying screaming oh it was a nightmare it was late at night as well when I realised I'd done it and I just wanted to cry <laughs> but I did it I frogged it all out and then spent the next day well a couple of hours the next day just re-knitting everything and then I sewed it all together so I just need to block it out and then that'll be ready for my mum so she's quite happy with that I'm just happy to have finished it because it means I can move on to my next project, which I will come to when I cover my plans. So those are my two finishes, my knitting and October. Um, but let's get on to the stitching that I've done, because I have managed to do quite a bit and I am quite happy with the progress that I've made, especially on two of the projects that I'm going to show you. But I'm going to start with... Um, Satsuma Street Happy Nest. Lovely, colourful, cheerful pattern, which I'm really enjoying doing because it's just colour blocking. Um, there's not much confetti in there. You just pick a colour, go for it. So it's good mindless stitching. Although not quite, and I'll come to that in a second. This is on... 28 count platinum which you'll find a lot of my patterns are on because I bought I, I found someone that was going cheap so I bought a whole a whole load of it and I love the colour anyway so but there you go Oops. those lovely lovely colours so um, I will insert a comparison here of what it was like last time I showed it, which will be my whip parade, and what it's like now. 
but what I will say about this is this is another one that nearly made me cry because I realised um, in the comparison um, you may have seen that this branch was up a little bit further which it did no sorry this branch here get my sides right this branch here was a lot further up I carried on working on it and I realised that I had totally miscounted somewhere I was a couple of stitches off but it wasn't one of those things that you could fudge it because um, I show you again on the pattern it's all interconnected at the top here and these are all very close to each other so if you get this counting wrong it makes it a bit of a nightmare up here so I had to frog out all of this <sighs> again lots of fun but I think that looks lovely again just absolutely loving those colours lovely and cheerful okay so that's my first one next one is um, Amethyst by um, Carolyn Manning so I'm going to insert a picture of this because I haven't actually printed out the um, front sheets because I kind of run incredibly low colour on my printer at the moment so I'll just insert the picture there um, so I'll also insert now what it did look like and this is what it is what it looks like now let me just get this the, yeah, that way around there you go so this is on 14 count Ada um, in the colour lavender it's a Spygart and again this is another lovely and easy stitch um, and that's just coming up really really nice I've got all my favourite colours in there purple and lavenders so I'm very happy with that so just a quick comparison between the two what it was and what it is now for you This is one I reach for when I just want something easy to do where I don't really have to think about it that much. And I'm really enjoying doing that one. Okay, next. So this is the first of the ink circles I'm going to show you. And it's Get Kraken. Get rid of the glare there. Well, somebody also had asked about what threads I'd swapped and what I'd kept. So this is charted in um, Gloriana silk um, colours um, with also the DMC equivalent. So there are one, two, there are eight colours in total and what I decided to do was to use three Glorianas on here. So the Kraken Arms, the Waves and the um, Gold for the Crowns which I'll show you in a second. I've kept them so I'll just show you. So it's the Gloriana Arctic Ice, Gloriana dried pink roses and Gloriana golden squash these are the ones I have kept and the rest I am using the DMC equivalent and I have finished the um, actual picture part of this so the boat and the scene apart from just a little bit at the bottom and I'll just quickly insert here where it was and here it is now so this is the dried pink rose on the tentacles there there we go I think that's just come up lovely So just a quick comparison between what it was like and what it is now. So it's quite a bit of stitching on that one. 
it really is going to take a while to get used to looking there instead of there <laughs> so I do apologize again if I'm glaring off into the distance right next is the first of one of my big ones and it's the next ink circle this is um, big red ship of life so for anyone who's watched um, one of my videos before you'll know that I was waiting for some silk for you thread and this had just come in so it's PR034 this it's actually darker than what it's showing on the camera there darker and richer but this is what I'm using for the main part of the picture and then on the outline I'm using DMC variation um, 115 so that's the red it goes from red to black so this here oops, sorry this here and at the bottom and this band here and here is all in the variations and it's going to be the center point here in this silk so this is on another 28 count and I'll insert a picture of what it was last time I showed it so what it looked like last time and oh sorry I'm surrounded by boards here and this is what it is now so I have made a start on the main picture there and I've done some more of the banding on the top I had initially thought that I would do all of this top banding first of all before I started on the main body but then I just couldn't wait as soon as those silks came in I just really wanted to start using them so <laughs> I broke my rule on this one and just got started on it and I'm so glad because I really I really enjoy using um, that silk it's just so smooth and sews up very easily so yeah i'm very happy with that so i'll pop in here a quick comparison of what it is a quick comparison between what it was and what it is now okay so next yep there is another one i know i'm not doing mania but i'm still covering Lots of people. I've still covered quite a few of my wicks in the last three weeks. So this one is it's a drawn thread one, and it's called Trick or Treat. And um, I'll insert a picture in here of what it was, what it did look like last time I showed you, and this is what it looks like. No. Oops, there we go. So I have done more on this side here. Um, I've done the T, R and I, finished off that C. Put the pumpkin in, the leaves and the vines and the moon. And I just love how those leaves and the vines have turned out. I think that the pattern is is lovely oh and the skeleton sorry i also put the skeleton in there yep i think that just looks absolutely lovely so what i'll do is i'm going to insert it in here a before and after and this is done on i'm using 28 count raw on this for the material okay so that's that one Ah, okay, so now the one that I have really, really gone to town with, and I really do mean gone to town with, I just started on it and then just did not want to put this down. And it's actually one after October. It is my next favourite out of all of my whips. And it is a long dog pilgrim. So this is, surprise, surprise, done on a 28 count. Um, it's cream and it is another Zweigart. 
I am using Mrs. Sadas Peacock and again this never shows the true colour. Well that's not that's not too bad actually. That's I think the light is not that's showing up quite quite well actually, quite true to life. That's a first. Um I'm gonna insert in now what it was what what it looked like last time I showed you. And what I might have to do is take a picture of this to show you the full effect of it because I think it's a little bit too big to show here. But what I'll do instead now is I'm just going to show you what I've worked on. Um, let me just put that board. I have, let me just bring up the pattern here. I've concentrated on doing the majority of this bit of work there. But I also, just for the fun of it, decided to work on the horse here. You know, why not? <laughs> That's a big bulk of stitching, so I thought I might get that over and done with. So what I have done is me. all of this. And to me the most wonderful bit of this is that I didn't need to frog any of it <laughs> which considering my history over the last couple of weeks it's been it's been frogger mania for me never mind ma mania it's been frogger mania but I managed to avoid doing any on this and then we have in the bottom You would not believe, well you probably would, but the number of stitches that went into this. But I did a lot of the outline, then just had something good on telly and just stitched away. Really enjoyable piece of stitching and again, as with the Silts For You silk, the Mrs Sadas silks, they're just a dream to work with. They just they very rarely tangle um, or not and they just they're just a dream to use which you know I'm curious as to what it is that um, you all um, listen to or watch when you're stitching because I find that I can't watch anything that's really involving because then you, you split your concentration gets split and that's probably when you start having to frog or make stupid mistakes like knit something the wrong way around so you have to frog half of it out. Um, I find that I'm doing a lot of audio books um, and a lot of podcasts so I like a lot of true crime stuff so I a couple of months ago um, I don't know if anybody's ever heard of someone called Karen Puzzles on YouTube she does a lot of jigsaw puzzles but she mentioned in one of her videos one day that she listened to something called My Favourite Murder. And I've never heard of this, even though they've been going for a couple of years. Um, and I thought, ooh, I might listen to that because it's a comedy true crime. And I know I've mentioned it before. So, But now I'm a religious listener to the point of I've actually got a cross stitch pattern, which I'm going to show you in a little bit um, as part of my plans. But So I watched that, I, I listened to that a lot and some other true crime ones. Um, on YouTube, I mean, I obviously watch Flosstube because that's, you know, a lot of stitch alongs and things like that. You can just listen to them while you're stitching along. But I've also um, found, I went to, when I went to university, I studied geology. So I was always fascinated in, you know, earthquakes, volcanoes, um, continents, move of the continents and all of this kind of stuff. And there is a, a professor in America called Nick Zemter who actually has been posting on YouTube um, all the um, lessons he's doing. So obviously while um, during the pandemic, while people haven't been able to go to their university lectures, they've been doing a lot of it via Zoom or live streams. And he's been using his channel on YouTube to do it. But what he's done is made it public. So... He's, and he's also been doing public lectures as well over the last couple of years. So I found um, 
reawakening my old love of geology basically watching all of these so I tend to listen to them now while I'm doing my stitching as well so it's you know easy listening while you're doing it and then last um, now this may not be for everybody's taste but there is a it's a podcast called The Dollop it's a history a history one it's a comedy one it's two comedians um, so one of them does all the work on it the research and the other one kind of doesn't know what subject is going to be covered and he's you know listening listening along with it as we do and it's very funny it's very they have a certain political stance so <clears throat> excuse me so that's that's what I mean about it. it's not for everyone but it's very 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 funny it can be quite dark at times but very very funny so I find that's also um, a good thing to that you know that's something that I've been listening to a lot while I've been stitching as well it's a very good distraction let's just put it that way so I'll just be interested if, if anyone's you know anyone's got, I mean other than things like YouTube which I know most of us do if anyone's got um, any other suggestions of things that they listen to or watch while they're stitching because I'm open to, to new things but um, that's my long dog and like I said I if I've not already done so I'll insert a before and after on that and also a full length picture of this so you can look at it in all its glory I'm now over halfway through it and I think a lot of what's left now is I don't think it's as heavy as up here and certainly not as heavy as the horse and the the raven or crow there um, but I'm going to concentrate on finishing this band next and then moving along to here but it's, it's, it's nearly there I can, I can sense that maybe in the next couple of months I can get that finished but anyway, moving on um, sorry, I'm just so proud of this I just can't wait for it to be finished I have two things left to show you as in whips that I've touched um, and the first one is Halloween Quaker now I'm doing this as part of Michelle Bendy Stitch's um, zoom call that she's got set up so I actually did one yesterday with her which was really really nice and we've got two hours on there um, but what Michelle is doing at the moment um, is she's picking a piece and she's basically doing 25 minutes every day on that piece and she has chosen to do it on this piece at the moment and she has over the last couple of weeks done a significant portion because it you know as as we mentioned last night it really really does add up so I'm going to blatantly copy her and do exactly the same and choose this as my piece to do it on so I'm going to keep it in the snap um in the cue snap and at the moment I'm working on the boots so this is what I did last night um, this and this so not a ton because I was also chatting away but um, I'm going to keep this in this um, in this cue snap and I'm basically going to work on this for around 25 minutes every day and I'll try and I'll you know I'll show you the progress in all of our you know in, in all of my videos but yeah so that's what I've done in here so I'll just insert a quick picture of what um, of what it did look like and I won't bother with the comparison because literally comparison picture because literally the only difference is these two boots that I've put in and then the other large piece now as I did mention what I'm really doing in May is I'm, I'm, I've selected four of my really big um, patterns so um, the long dog one, long dog pilgrim that you've just showed you is one of them. Um, Bear Mountain is another, is another, and October Hawk Run Hollow is um, the third. But the fourth one is my heaven and earth design, and where's the uh, ah here it is in my homemade um, project bag. So that is Flutter from Heaven and Earth Designs 
I'm doing this on a 25 count easy guide and I will insert in what a picture of what it looked like last time I showed it to you and it's on it's still on the um, frame because I'm working on this at the moment so as I said I'm doing four to five days in each one so I've done a day on here and what I've basically done is worked on the eye so anyway so that's flutter so that's what I'm working on at the moment although I will before I start working on that I'll just do my 25 minutes on Halloween Quaker and then I'll move on to flutter so that is the last of the whips that I have touched in the last three weeks so what I will do now is just go into the very small amount of haul I have I say very small amount because I am on a mass freeze for buying at the moment um, my life situation is such that I I mean hopefully it will be resolved in the next week or so but for especially the last month I've been severely restricted on what I can can purchase but what I did purchase in fact I'll insert the picture here because I've just realized I'm filming this on my iPad and everything is stored on my iPad but I did mention that I have fallen in love with the podcast my favorite murder and I found a brilliant pattern for it on Good Morning Maui which I will insert in here. So what I am looking to do in the in the next week or so is to potentially start on that. So that's the first haul. Now the second part is it's actually something that I bought over a month ago and it's something that I mentioned in my previous videos but I have a pattern and um, it's all Souls um, Verlanden um, Quiltify Designs and I did actually start this on some fabric that I, that I had dyed now this wasn't a this was an even weave it wasn't a linen so it didn't take the dye as well as I wanted it to I wanted it to be a much deeper deeper purple I'm using um, Mrs. Sadas Peacock Silk, but I didn't want to abandon abandon it because I really love the pattern. So I, sorry, just bear with me one second. Sorry. So I decided to look for a different fabric because I still really wanted to use this silk on it but what I did do is I found the colour that in my mind I had thought I was dyeing this to <laughs> talk about the reality being nothing like what I had imagined but this is a chromatic alchemy fabric again 28 count obviously um, it's linen and it's plain so it's not opal so it's not got the shimmery um shimmery stuff in but it's called sea witch and i think i had inserted a picture in my last floss tube video but it actually arrived and i was so excited haven't stitched on it yet i will be soon but look at this glorious fabric how amazing so i am incredibly happy about that so there we go show that there so oops and i have just thrown it on the floor so you know maybe not oh god i need to be careful when i do that so i, I you may not have seen it but i have just recently just pop that out of the way there i've just recently filmed a video um and posted it yesterday for um, to show how I store my floss and to show kitting up a project that I'm going to show in my plans in a second and <laughs> finished it I was watching the video back everything seemed fine 
watching the video and realised that the top I was wearing had been gaping forward every time I bent forward and everybody was getting a lovely view of my decollage, shall we say, of my chestal area and it was... Oh. yeah, so I had to... <laughs> I had to redo all of that that I was you know very happy about so in the same vein as having to uh, you know frog out all of that the first you know the top half of that panel and a ton of that tree in the happy nest yeah I had to redo that video so and then for the redo just absolutely paranoid every time I went forward that I was going to do exactly the same Typical me, really, that. But, um, yeah. So, that was fun. Um, but, moving on from that, one of my plans is, as I am now, going to start my mum's piece. So, I finished the card before I wanted to, wear, although I had initially said I was going to start it in the last couple of weeks, I decided that I would actually finish the knitting first of all, because mum really wants that cardigan. So I'm going to block that today and get that off to her next week. But now that that's finished, I can finish, I can actually start her cross stitch for her. So it's the drawn thread, the garden game. So like my trick and treat, trick or treat is a drawn thread. But on this one, I have decided to go with all the called for. So it's the called for material and the called for threads. Um, I just got um, all the threads from 123 Stitch and West End Embroidery, which is in the UK. And this is the more kitted up now. So I've got my variegated ones in these little floss away bags with the tag there so I can see what they are. And my MPIs, I've put on the little um, homemade cards with um, the name written on there. And then I've got the um, material, which is, it's not 28 count, haha, -ha. through curveball there, it is a, try not to show the pattern there, it's 32 count smoky pearl Belfast linen. So I got this from Patchwork Rabbit, which is a, another UK online company, but they ship everywhere. So I'm going to start that. Um, I'm, go um, I'm going to work on flutter for the next couple of days and then the next peach piece I touch will be this. So hopefully in my next video um, I'll have um, some progress on that for you. And then let me just put this in here so I don't lose track of it. The next thing I'm going to do, my next plan is start a new knitting project. So this is one that I've been planning to do for a while. It's Land of Sweets Cowl. I will insert a picture of that here. And what I did last night is I am using my, um, what's it called? The umbrella type thing when you're balling up your oh, I'll insert the name at the bottom because I'm not going to I'm not going to um, sit here for five minutes trying to remember that name but what I did was I have six colours that I have chosen I've got them all in the little yarn cakes here numbered in the order I'm not going to take them all out because I've um, I've done this in a previous video where I've shown them all. But I've put, got them in these bags. So there's one, two. The I, I will tell you what type it is though. It's um, Fibrelicious, sorry, Vivacious Four Ply by Fibre Space Yarns. And I've got them in these bags here. And these are all the um, the colours I'm going to use. So you need 
24 I think it was based on 24 colours um, but I'm just going to alternate between these six um, and in fact I'll I'll insert quickly here a picture of what they look like when they're laid out in the order that I'm going to do them um, but I did this last night which took a couple of hours but I put the dollop on and um, it was a good one last night it was um, based on the voyage of HMS Beagle which is Charles Darwin but it's um, yeah you may think well I thought this was a comedy podcast it is very funny trust me um, so this is what I'm going to cast on tonight Yay! Um, and I think this is going to be a lot easier than <laughs> that bloody part of my French book bloody cardigan I love doing it for my mum love my mum to bits and although when she did first say will you do this I was like oh, I'm really glad I've done that cardigan for her because I've learnt a lot on it about following patterns, about decreasing stitches and fancy stitches and all of that and knitting things together but I don't think I should have done that as my first main major project I think it was a lot to take on I'm just glad it's finished let's just put it that way so I think this is going to be a lot easier I've got pattern already here so start on that tonight in my other homemade bucket now these are actually what they've started doing here in the UK and they probably do them in other countries as well is where all your fresh vegetables are instead of plastic bags to put you know your loose potatoes loose carrots in they actually have these and they're only about 20p each so I've just picked up a bunch of these, they're like drawstring and just a cheap way of keeping your um, wool um, contained, especially when you need multiple colours. But then what I've done, and this is a real cheap thing, um, I've taken some tights and some old tights that have not been worn <laughs> and cut up the legs and used them to um, contain the cakes swift and it's the swift swift is the umbrella thing and the yarn winder <sighs> remembered <laughs> sorry <laughs> But anyway, yeah, so that's that was what I was doing last night. So that's ready to start off tonight. So hopefully when I next see you in a couple of weeks time, I'll have a bit of progress on that to show you as well. Um, so those are, I think, ah, there is one other thing. Um, let me just think. Yeah, so I have a painting that I, there is a, well, I don't have it, I have a print of it, but there is a painting that I found um, a while ago that I'll insert a picture here. Um, I went on pixel stitch and converted it to a cross stitch pattern. So it's a full coverage, as you'll see from the picture. It's full, full, um, I know other people have talked about converting these um, you know, pictures that they like into cross stitch so I thought you know what I think I'm going to try that as well and have this as my next full coverage piece. So when I next able, oh, sorry one second Ruby, hello what's the matter? Hello, sorry she's just What's the matter? There we go. Little Ruby monster. Okay, so now for the life update portion of the video. So for all of you who were just interest, interested in seeing whips, goodbye. <laughs> Thank you for watching and if you like what you saw please do like and subscribe if you feel like it. 
um, for everybody else who is interested, just a quick rundown of what's been going on over the past couple of weeks. So I had hoped to do a, to film last weekend, but life intruded in the form of, well not intruded, but um, there were things I needed to do for my parents. Um, they live about an hour away and they're both in their 80s so um, I pop up there as often as I can to do any heavy duty jobs and now that they've had both their vaccinations and I have had both my vaccinations it basically means that I can go up there and do a little bit more inside the house for them so I know a couple of weeks ago I think I mentioned that I had done their driveway for them um, using a power washer um, and I'd done stuff in the garden and all of that but what I got to do this last weekend was actually get in their house and do things like carpet cleaning and cleaning some cabinets and things like that um, so yes I did have my second vaccination yes um, I did have reactions for both of the vaccinations I had um, but they only lasted for a day or so Yes, I did feel a little bit tired for another day or so after that, but that was it. And to be honest, I'd rather have that than actually catch COVID and get the full force of it. Um, so I had my second vaccinations because I do have some underlying health issues. So that's why I, even though I am under 50, yes, I am under 50. <laughs> I have managed to get both of my um, vaccinations a little bit early um, but what it has meant is because I live alone um, I was going up to see my parents anyway but I was having to keep a good distance away from them because you know they're, as I mentioned they're both in their 80s so the last thing I wanted to do was to bring anything into their house household but now although we're, we're you know we're not hugging and kissing and things like that but it does mean that I can, you know, get in the house and help with the cleaning. So like I said, I was doing carpet cleaning over the weekend. But then also I was doing a mass house tidy all over the weekend and the Friday because my brother was coming to use my shower. Now, I'm not saying that my house is untidy, but there's a tidy house and there's a tidy house. And when you have family members coming to stay, you want to make sure it's very tidy, especially when it's someplace like the bathroom. Now again, I'm not saying that my bathroom was very untidy, but it's tidy for just me living in the house as opposed to tidy for having visitors round. So <laughs> I had a day of not just tidying my bathroom, but tidying the pathway he would have to take to get to my bathroom. I have my pride. <laughs> So that was last weekend so that's why um, I didn't get anything done then and then during the week there were various things uh, ultimately I decided you know what I'll just do it next weekend um, today so to speak um, but also if I'm being perfectly honest I've had a little bit of a crappy 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 week um, I know I have alluded in previous videos that there have been issues with my job and those are still ongoing. It's still not opened up properly yet, so I'm still not in I'm still not able to open up the office here and get things going, so that's caused issues with income and, and whatnot and it's it's the reason behind my very strict policy of no new purchases. Um other than that. MFM pattern which was only which was only four pounds so I'm allowing that um I even had to let my Disney plus lapse <laughs> terrible the decisions we have to make um no it's not it was Disney plus it's fine letting it lapse but um you know it you have to do what you have to do um so it's been a little bit stressful and that is one of the reasons why I went back crap crazy on Pilgrim <laughs> just sewed a ton of that for that old stress relief um, 
yeah, so I'm not going to bore you with all the details. There have been times when I've wanted to scream. There have been times when I have cried. Um, times when I've been very anxious about what's going to happen. But on the other side, I'm very lucky in the fact that I do have parents that are in a position that they can help out and support me. I have brilliant friends and I have found this great hobby you know, well, hobbies from the cross stitching to the knitting to diamond painting with, you know, picking up a drill, putting the drill down, picking up another drill or putting in a cross or knitting a stitch. All of these things are great stress relief, you know, finding some really good things on Flash Tube and some really good podcasts. So, you know, I know there are a lot of people out there who have suffered from really bad depression through all of this, you know, have really suffered. Um, whether or not it is because they've been, you know, they've had to isolate on their own for like over a year now, or had very little contact during that year. Or even in family, it doesn't matter if you, you know, if you suffer from depression or high anxiety, you suffer it no matter what the situation. And I am, um, I know I'm incredibly lucky that I don't suffer with depression so although yes there have been times when I felt down I have you know I have been able to say to myself come on you know you are very lucky here really you know you've got a house you've got a you've got a house you've got a roof over your head you've got some lovely pets even though one of them is causing you even more stress at the moment she is um tabby um she is over grooming I think well I can pretty much guess that she's picking up you know on a lot of my stress and that's causing you know and maybe other issues as well but that's causing her to over groom so you know but that's that that's nothing that's you know that'll be sorted soon but it's you know it, it is what it is I'm we're getting there and hopefully in the next couple of weeks you know possibly in my next video I'll be able to give you some good news and say right yes there's less stitching because I am now back at work full time have an income coming in again and everything is you know it's all incredibly busy at work and my complaint will be that I've not got enough time to do all the stitching that I want to do so that's what I'm hoping I'll be able to say the next video we do so what I'm going to do is I am going to sign off there and um, thank you for watching this be it as a new watcher or one of my lovely subscribers I've now hit 200 subscribers which is just amazing to me and um, for anyone who has left a comment as well thank you because they've all been lovely and I've tried to respond to everyone and um, if there's any that I've missed out a response for I do apologize but I'll always put um I'll always you know click the little heart thing so you can show you know just to show that I have actually seen your comment and read it but I am trying to while I can respond to every comment that's on there but as I said they've all all been absolutely lovely so I really really do appreciate that Um, so I just I really hope that you are all safe and well and um, that your family family and friends are all safe as well and that um, you've enjoyed watching this but again thank you very much um, for watching for liking uh, if you subscribe uh, subscribe as well thank you very much for that I'm I'm not a huge um, counter for subscribers and things like this for me it's more about you know seeing the comments and having communication with people so I really do appreciate that but hopefully I will see you again in two weeks and I'll either be a lot of stitching <laughs> well there may not be as much stitching but whichever it is um i look forward to um doing this again in two weeks so from me and from the little ruby monster here who's been on my lap for most of this um i will see you um shortly well i will see you in two weeks <laughs>